So listen, do not retaliate because they will reap what they sowed for what they did to you. Okay. Don't retaliate because they will reap what they sowed for what they did to you. Do not think for one second that God doesn't see all of the things that people have did to you that hurted you, right? Don't think for one second that he doesn't see all of the times people have lied on you, stolen from you, um, gossiped about you, try to put witchcraft on you. Like, don't think for one second he doesn't see it because he does, right? And one thing about it is everybody has to pay for the consequences of their actions, right? Nobody's exempt, including me. Everybody has to pay for the consequences of their actions. So they are going to reap what they sold for what they did to you. And I know sometimes it may seem like, man, people are constantly doing things to you. And you may feel like you constantly have to endure and endure and endure. And all the people who have, you know, did you wrong, they get to just walk away and live their lives and you don't get no type of apology. They don't hold themselves accountable. And it's like, you're left with having to deal with the pain and hurt of people hurting you. God is going to handle it. He is going to take care of it, right? There are certain situations where he may tell you, listen, don't retaliate, don't say anything, just silence. Silence, right? Sometimes silence is your superpower, right? And there are certain situations where you do have to speak up and you do have to defend yourself and you do have to protect your name, right? You just have to be able to use discernment and wisdom and know how to choose your battles, right? And picking your battles wisely. Don't be petty. You know, some of us want to be petty. We want to match energy and we want to argue and we want to give this person a piece of our mind, right? Listen, every situation doesn't deserve a response or a reaction, right? And that doesn't mean that you're weak. Um, it doesn't mean that you're a pushover. It doesn't mean that you're a doormat, that people can just walk all over, especially as a man or a woman of God. When you have the light, you got to be the bigger person. You have to, right? And I know sometimes, again, it seems unfair. It seems like, man, I always got to be the bigger person. I always got to be the one to walk away. I always got to be like, it just seems unfair at times. And, it, and it's hard. It really is hard, okay? But that's part of the walk. Like, you can't stoop down to their level because that's what they want, right? They're looking for a reaction out of you. They're looking for... um that anger in you, right? They want to see you angry. They want to see you, you mad. They want to see how you get when, you know, they constantly poke and poke and provoke and provoke. They want to see that side of you, but don't give them what they want, right? Don't give them what they want because that's what they're looking for. So even if people are doing things to you and, you know, they're hurting you, they're saying things to you that hurt you and listen, stand down. OK, do not retaliate. Do not be petty. I left a community post um, asking my subscribers what type of topics you guys want me to talk about. OK, and somebody said, you know, forgiveness, resentment, uh, anger and something else. Right. Even if people do things to hurt you. Right. As hard as it is. You got to forgive. Right. You have to be able to walk in forgiveness. It is not easy. So I'm not going to sit up here and act like, oh, just forgive. Just forgive. It's not easy. Okay? Because there's certain things that people do to you where it's like, it's extreme. Right? And it's like, how can I forgive somebody who has uh, did something to me that was so extreme? Right? Let's say somebody put their hands on you. Like, like you know what I'm saying? Like, it's not easy. It's something hard, right? Um, but you can't walk around with anger and resentment in your heart and holding on to a grudge because of something that somebody did to you. All that is going to do is just show up in other areas of your life, right? This is why I'm constantly emphasizing healing and working on yourself and acknowledging your flaws, acknowledging the things that you have to work on, right? So that way you can become the best version of yourself, right? Like you got to do the work. You got to do the inner work. 
and not just doing it for you, but do it for the people who care about you and love you, right? Don't hold on to a grudge or have this anger and resentment and unforgiveness of um, unforgiveness in your heart because of what somebody did to you. And now it's showing up in your friendships. Now that anger is showing up in your marriage. Now that anger and resentment is showing up in your career. Now your children, your spouse, your friends, people who care about you and love you, they have to deal with that side of you because you're walking around with unforgiveness, right? And that's not fair to those people. People who care about you and love you, they should be able to get the best version of you, right? Doesn't mean that you're perfect. Doesn't mean that you're going to get things right all the time. And nine times out of 10, the people who have hurted you, they moved on. You don't think they know they did you wrong? You don't think they know? right? Even if you never get that apology, even if they never hold themselves accountable, they know what they did, which is why they're going to reap what they sowed, right? But they moved on, right? They're living their life. So why should you give them that much power over your life where you spend majority of your life just angry and mad because of what they did when this person has moved on, right? Not saying it's right, for them to not apologize. But it's like, you can't spend the rest of your life just being mad and, and unforgiving, right? So you have to forgive. Just imagine, just imagine, right? All of the times we go to God and ask for forgiveness. Just imagine if he would have said like, you know, like, no. As much as we mess up, like we mess up a lot. OK. We mess up a lot. So thank God for repentance and grace. Right. Even though you have some people who abuse it and they already premeditate their sin and they just say, well, I'm just going to do this sin and I'll just repent later. No, don't abuse it. Right. But thank God for that. Thank God we have repentance and grace. Right. Because we mess up. We mess up a lot. We do wrong a lot. In Matthew, I believe, 18, right? It talks about Peter asking Jesus, um, if a brother sins against me, how many times do I have to forgive him? Right? And he's like, do I have to forgive him seven times? And Jesus is like, no. Right? And I'm paraphrasing. He's like, seven times? No. More like 70 times, seven times. Right? And that's a lot. That's a lot, right? So you got to walk in forgiveness, okay? Don't retaliate. You don't have to be petty. You don't have to always respond, right? You got to use discernment and wisdom. And you can go to God and ask him, how do you, how does he want you to respond, right? You should communicate with him. You should have that relationship with him where it's like, hey, even if you're unsure, right? Even if you feel like, man, I'm not that mature yet. <laughs> right? I still got a little bit of pettiness in me. Lord, I need your help. I need your guidance. Please tell me how to handle this situation right now. Because right now I do want to be petty, right? Like I, I do want to be petty. I'm angry. You know, this person is doing this to me and I want to respond. I want to give them a piece of my mind. Like, Lord, please help me, right? Like if you can't, if you feel like, man, you're just not mature enough, you can go to him. I've had certain situations where people have said things about me talked about me, right? And I didn't say anything. I just kept quiet, didn't say a peep because I just knew that eventually it will play out in my favor, right? And those same people who talked about me, they end up exposing themselves, right? They end up exposing themselves. I didn't have to do anything. And I just watch it all play out. And I'm just like, whoa. Well, that was fast because I know, I know my God doesn't play about me, right? I know he doesn't. So you got to be able to choose your battles wisely. Certain situations, you have people who will provoke you and they're looking for a response out of you, right? Yeah, or they're trying to bully you and in intimidate you, right? Um, waiting for you to respond. It's like, listen, I don't have to respond to you. I just know it's going to play out. I just know you're going to expose yourself. And I know everybody else is going to see it. And it happens a lot, right? They end up exposing themselves and they end up reaping what they sowed, right? They end up paying for the consequences of their actions. 
So listen, I know my God don't play about me. He don't play. Okay. Especially if, you know, I know I didn't do anything wrong to you. I never provoked you, uh, never said anything bad about you, but it's like, you're lying on me, talking bad about me. Like, you know, just for no reason. And listen, people will reap what they sow. It's going to catch up to you eventually. That's the thing. It catches up. You can only go so long where you live a certain way or you're living a lifestyle of, of sin or you're lying, you're stealing, you're gossiping about other people, you're, whatever it is that you're doing, right? It will eventually catch up to you and you have to pay. You have to pay for that. It doesn't mean that you're wishing harm on these people. It's just that, listen, God is going to handle it because sometimes God doesn't need your help, right? Sometimes he's like, listen, I got it. I will handle it. Hopefully this video was helpful. Please give it a thumbs up and I will see you guys in the next video.